Hello friends and everyone, welcome back to Netcode Hub channel. In this video, we are going to continue on our map integration in Blazor Hybrid mobile application. We've done four videos. In those videos, I spoke about how you can integrate map in your app, mobile app, how you can set your current location in it, how you can integrate marker or how to add interactive marker to your location or your coordinates and the last one was how you can add google map search how you can search places with the help of autocomplete now in this video which is going to be the fifth one we're going to talk about how we can integrate directions how to set directions in google map you know when you want to set directions you need two coordinates talking about the starting coordinate and now the ending coordinate when you have this start and end coordinate we can initialize or we can call the google service or direction api which is going to strike a line between these two coordinates and that is what we're going to have a look in this video so if you haven't checked any of the videos check the video description the playlist is there you can go in and now watch those videos as usual if you are happy to see more of this and you enjoy this uh, lesson make sure you give me a thumbs up and also subscribe if you haven't done that and click on the notification bell to receive update as soon as i upload a new content on map integration or any other blazer or blazer hybrid content all right now let's move on so this is what we did in the last video we have our map.js whereby we integrated the search now in order for us to have this direction service we must activate that when the page initializes so in our initialize method that we created let's initialize the directions here So in here we are activating the two services and since we have the map initialized as you can see we created um, this one is a global variable but within this method we still can use if even it is a local variable then we have this map stored as soon as it initializes we have the map stored over here and we want to add the map set the map in the renderer so here we're going to have the service and we're going to have the renderer which is going to render the map that you're going to create by specifying the coordinates now that we have this service activated now let's go and uh, create a function now this function will be responsible for retrieving values from two test input test boxes then it's going to use these values it's going to extract the coordinates from these values and start um, the request with these coordinates So when you look at this you can see we are writing a small function now this function is going to initialize the start and our end field it's going to take in an, an 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 element id of start location and end location that means we're going to create an element which is going to be an input element and we need to specify the id attribute and then the value for that attribute should be start location and our end location respectively 
now we're going to initialize this autocomplete so that the user start to type in the place a pop-up or a drop down will pop up so user can select uh, um, maybe a specific location from the list now we're going to add event handler we want to bind the selected location to the variable that we have created here so we bind this place change and now we start the autocomplete and now when this starts as soon as the user selects we're going to have this get place so the place is going to be received from here and now we want to extract the start latitude and longitude from the place which have been selected and we can get that from the place the geometry the location i hope this is clear now we're doing the same for the end autocomplete so when the method execute up to this level we would have gotten our start lat long and now end lat long right good so the next thing that we're going to be doing after doing this is to start with our calculation how to calculate for the route let's have our let's copy this method and let's initialize it here now let's create another function which is going to calculate the route Now, when we check our calculate route function that we have created, we first want to check um, in case we have marker put in place, we want to remove it. The reason that the reason behind that is we're going to have our two coordinates set. So we don't want to have any marker set alongside, maybe pointing to other location, etc. Because we're going to provide a start and end location. Then we're going to create our request. Our request takes in this um, our start lat long which is the coordinate our destination which is the end coordinate and also the travel mode so here i'm using driving you can use walking you can use bicycle you can use all the modes okay in here but let's focus on one which is driving then when you have this request created we need to send the request to the api that's the route now in here so we're going to call this direction service then we're going to send it now when routing we're going to provide in the request that's what we have created from our system now, when it get to that place, that's a um, Google server, it's going to process it and I return a result and also and status. So this result and status, we're going to check first if the status here is equal to OK based on direction status. Then we want to set the direction. By then, this direction will be having the correct data. So we can set the direction straight to the result then when we have that we can also retrieve our results uh, that's for our duration and our distance from it so we do that from uh, extracting our duration and our distance um, within that uh, between those um, coordinates and then we want to have our div element so we can pass on this information to the user so you can see that there is a there is a, a kilometers there is a time duration that you're going to use when driving to reach that place from the start to an end see so once you have this let's go and create our um, element in the component so in our home element that's where we have our we're initializing our app we have our div to initialize the app the map itself now you want to put we have this search so maybe we can put this start and the end element also here 
So let's do that. So in here when you look at our element that we have created it's a div which takes in three elements input to input element and also we have one button we're going to display that horizontally and in there we're going to have a show route button if we just click we want to bind this event we call the function that we have created this is quite simple isn't it and i believe you understand and you can do this great all right so the next thing i'm going to be doing here is we are done we're going to run this project and i'll test it out So our app is ready and as you can see from here i have this search button on top and i can see i have this um stats location now and location whereby i can have this um show route but we missed one thing and i believe you did not miss that when we check our um, js file that we created from our map.js you can see that we going to, we need an a div element to write uh, route info so we can display that and we forgot to create it did you create that okay so maybe uh, we can go in there and i create it so let's copy this route info then let's go to our home and maybe we can add a text box down here All right, so our app is now ready. It is loading. And then we have our div here. Route info will appear here. Okay, so when the app loads, you know, we have in our location. I think we have an issue here. We can check it from this output. And it's coming from the line 22. Let's check it out from our home component. So in our home page line 22, that is coming from this invoke method. I know here this is going to happen or this error is coming from the service that we injected because that is the only thing that we did in there let's check our map.js and here i think the error is going to come from here either from this method or from that so let's debug it line by line and check it out so we have this variable created direction service and then directions renderer we must make sure we are having the same value set here then we have the direction renderer that's great now here we have this google.maps.directions okay service oh, okay so it's direction service, not direction services. Let's rerun this. So the map is loaded with no issue. And you can see we have our current location. Now we, we integrated the search, so we are not focusing on the search. We want to look at the stats and now the end um, location. So let's do it. Now we also added um, autocomplete. So as soon as I type in something like Accra, I must have this autocomplete. Let me go in for the more. Now choose that and that is uh, my start. Now let's go in for the end. And I'm going to choose like Kumasi. And here I'm going to choose a city more. So I'm going to locate between two malls from two regions and I'll check the, the route, okay? check the the duration the distance and a whole lot so I'll click on show route and now let's see so we see it is going to locate and let's see we have our b okay so that means we have our distance one minute this is one meters and we have one meter we have our duration as one minute 
all right so i think there's something wrong here because when you take a see are not having our a and there's no line let's go and debug our application again and check it out so when you look at our the method that we created that's to initialize the start and end field that is where the error might come from let's go and check it out so from here we have our start uh, coordinate and our end coordinate we get them by id we get also we initialize the autocomplete for both start and end great we have start and end amazing now start autocomplete we want to attach an event which is place change in that i want to get the place and i'll start to the start and i will do same we create the place so oh, okay so watch here we are repeating the same thing so here should be end that is it again and let's go and do this again oh amazing so we see that here we have the a and b that's our starting point from a and that's our ending point the distance here is 248 kilometers and the duration is going to take me four hours 54 minutes to drive from here up to that if i click on the label i have the where i am having it and if i click on the other one too you can also have this label you see so that is a this is the default one provided by google and as soon as you have this direction created or established between two coordinates you get these labels automatically all right so you can try your hands on it and it's going to work for you as well all right so that would be the end for this video we've seen how we can calculate for distance and construct a line default by google uh, between two coordinates we've seen how we also um, created this input element we're going to be received and also um, listen for change in a javascript function that we created all right so stay tuned and next one we're going to talk about something interesting and you're going to love that so stay tuned for more as usual if you haven't subscribed then you make sure you do that and if you know you've learned something and you're okay with this and you want to get more of this then make sure you also give a thumbs up to this video until then take care and see you again